And since we've mentioned the central and peripheral nervous systems, why not take a look at this piece? Here we can see clearly that the brain and spinal cord constitute the central nervous system, the area enveloped by meninges, and for example myelinated by oligodendrocytes, and that from it spreads the peripheral nervous system. Now, this distinction is important because pretty much the diseases that involve each one are quite different. Of note to us here, for example, that we haven't already seen in the brain models are the plexi. So here we have, for example, the cervical and brachial plexus, and here we have the sacrolumbar plexus. Their primary function is, of course, annoying medical students, but a secondary function is providing motor and sensory innervation to the limbs. And that's how we get, for example, herbs palsy if you injure the brachial plexus during vaginal delivery with a shoulder dystocia.